Today, I'd like to tell you a love story. Now, it's not your typical love story. This is a story about a love that goes largely unseen and uncelebrated. But I believe when partnered with the right tools for engagement and empowerment, has the power to change the world. I grew up here in the Great Lakes, spending summers swimming, paddling, on, in, and around the water as much as I could. And I loved it. And when I was 11, we moved away to a region where I didn't have direct access to the water. And as much as I missed the water, it gave me an opportunity in my travels to celebrate and enjoy other environments. And so I fell in love with mountains and forests. But something was always calling me back. So in 2014, I moved back to the Great Lakes. And at the same time, I also accepted a challenge to sail across the Atlantic Ocean, having never sailed before. And this wasn't just a sailing trip. This was a research mission looking at the interconnectedness of human and environmental health, specifically looking at plastics and toxics pollution in our waterways, but also in our own bodies. And it was on board this trip that I met Elaine. Out of an international crew of 14, we were both Canadian. And not only that, but we were both from the Great Lakes. Talk about a small world. And of course, on those long night watches, we started to share stories about our home about our passion for our backyard and the water. But at the same time, we were also on a journey together where we were faced by the harsh reality of this plastic and toxic pollution out there in the middle of the ocean. And very quickly, the conversation, of course, turned to our water back home. If it was this bad out in the Atlantic Ocean, what would it be like back in the Great Lakes? And so we started to plan. We wanted to basically bring this mission and vision, this energy, back to our home and provide an opportunity for citizens across the Great Lakes to get out on the water and connect them in an entirely different way. And not only just go out paddling, but do something tangible. We wanted them to sample for microplastics. We wanted them to conduct shoreline cleanups. And so we settled on this plan to do a one-day mass engagement event. And it started with just five boats. We wanted to do a sailboat on each Great Lake that would do sampling for microplastics. And very quickly, our team started to grow. What was five boats very soon became seven because doing just the Great Lakes wasn't enough. We wanted to do the connecting waterways. So we had a boat on Lake St. Clair and the St. Lawrence River as well. And these were crewed by amazing scientists on both sides of the border who were experts in microplastic pollution, but also a mixture and a cross-section of society. Activists, artists, sailors, and above all, concerned citizens of the Great Lakes. But this wasn't quite enough. We wanted to make it a little bit bigger. And we decided we wanted to do two student boats. So we had two tall ships, one in Lake Huron and one in Lake Michigan, and we had youth aged 8 to 25 go out and experience this day as well. And as we started to sort of spread the word about what we were doing, we had people emailing us saying, how can I get involved? What can I do? I want to get my whole community out. And so we started to expand the team a little bit more. And we designed basically a multi-tiered engagement day where it didn't matter where you were on the Great Lakes, how you could get involved, whether you could sail, whether you could canoe, kayak, paddleboard, wade, swim, or just walk the beach. Everybody could get involved. And that's when things got pretty big. On the 20th of August, 2016, over 1,000 people took to the Great Lakes to stand up for their future health. They conducted shoreline cleanups and water sampling for microplastics. And it became the world's largest simultaneous sampling for microplastics in history. For me, as this crazy idea that I came up with over you know, 18 months before this, it was amazing to see all of these people come together 
to take care of the Great Lakes. Above all, regardless of contributing to international data sets and increasing awareness of the issue, what this signaled to me was the creation of a community. It was a coming together of people who care. And we knew because it was a simultaneous event, I always joke that I wish I could have teleported on the day and been on each of the boats or in all of the communities, but I couldn't. And so we decided to really utilize social media for people to come out and basically share their stories with us, whether it was video or photos, using the hashtag loveyourgreats. And on the day, in real time, we saw all of these stories come out online. People water sampling, whether they were shore, doing shoreline cleanups, some people just had plastic-free barbecues and conversations, some did film screenings about plastic issues. But above all, they were all aware of one another. It was a community, a new community, that were now sharing their stories and their love for the Great Lakes. So as we started to look at all of these photos and these videos, we said, what's the one underlying factor here? Why are all of these people getting out on the Great Lakes to be a part of this? And the only answer was love. This time last, well, I guess it wasn't this time last year, but um, I was up on this stage and I spoke about a theory. It was the theory of being a glocal a global local, somebody who wasn't afraid to act in the face of global environmental challenges, particularly quite terrifying ones like plastics in the oceans and our waterways. And I can stand here today and tell you that that theory isn't just a theory, it's a reality. And that's pretty exciting. And above all, the fact that this theoretical idea is driven by love. So I encourage you, whatever your great may be, whether it's the pond in your backyard, the river that flows through your town or city, whether it's the Great Lakes or it's the oceans, I encourage you to stand up and love it. And above all, act to protect it. Thank you.